Now, a question we continue to ask on this channel is, is it possible to make this game a little bit easier by choosing the clubs that best suit your game? It's freezing out there, and I need a brew. Now, my answer to that question is yes, absolutely we can. I think we've done a lot on this channel this year at looking at certain clubs that are without doubt more forgiving than others, launch the ball easier than other equivalents might do. And in today's video, I'm gonna look at two clubs that I think are very, very good in terms of making that game a little bit easier. They're very similar in many ways, but what I'm looking to do to find out today is the differences between the two clubs and which one might be best suited to your game. Now the clubs in question and to be compared are a fairway wood and a hybrid. They are in fact a nine wood and a five hybrid. Now they are very, very similar in many ways in the fact that they make the game extremely easy at the long end of the bag, which often very many average golfers can struggle with. There's a couple of things though that make these also very different from one another. Now the first thing that separates these two is one degree aloft. What we've got is a nine wood, which is 24 degrees, and we've got a five hybrid, which is 25 degrees. The other thing to mention is the length of shaft in the nine wood is one inch longer than that of the hybrid. So clearly we're gonna see some yardage differences you would expect. But I'm interested to see in terms of that one degree of difference, what it does in terms of launch angle. I'm also interested to see how these uh, compare in terms of spin but perhaps looking to see what they do in terms of confidence at address, in terms of the different size of head profile, because they're very, very different. And once again, some of that is gonna suit. So the larger head pro profile is gonna to appeal to some, the smaller head profile of the hybrid is gonna to appeal to others. So there's a lot of things that are different. There's a lot of things that are very, very similar. The question is what separates them in terms of performance, and more importantly, which one might be best for your game? So the first question you would need to answer is, at address, do you prefer the larger profile of a fairway wood or that of a hybrid? And that straight away is gonna be a big separator because there's a clear divide. I read the comments all the time. Some of, a lot of people just don't like a hybrid and a lot of people would be much more drawn towards the larger head pro profile of a fairway wood. And let's not forget what these are replacing because ultimately these are replacing long iron equivalents in your bag. And that's why they become, in my opinion, so much more easier, much more appealing to most average golfers than trying to, fire, uh, trying to play rather what would be perhaps a five iron equivalent. And I say a five iron because I reference the loft but in terms of distance carried, I really think the surprise is you're looking at taking out your sort of four iron out the bag or anything in and around that sort of four, three loft, which is very, very different than the 24 degrees that is on this nine wood. But in terms of distance traveled, for me at least anyway, it's very much the equivalent club in the bag. And that is of course a major question that needs to be answered because I for one would certainly prefer to have this type of head profile at address than I would a sort of long iron equivalent. We talk about, can this game be made easier? Is there any uh, truth in sort of technology making a game easier? A lot of people doubt that, but I think this kind of thing, whether it's technology, head profile, whatever you want to call it, but fairway woods and hybrids compared to long irons, well, my God, I know which I'd prefer. But am I getting this completely wrong? And uh, I'd love to hear from you in terms of your comments below. How many of you of taking out longer irons, maybe four, four iron, five iron, even six iron, and replace them with hybrid or fairway wood equivalents. Because what I'm seeing right now is a big trend and move towards these kind of clubs in the bag. Even manufacturers right now are really looking to promote and add, particularly the lofted fairways uh, is a big deal right now. And I think particularly with, uh, ironically, where it, that man behind me, Dustin Johnson, adding seven woods and nine woods in his bag has been a, it's been a big game changer because the mentality of the, of the average golfer is basically saying, well, if it's okay for Dustin, then it's okay, I can put one in and not feel too embarrassed about having a nine wood in the bag. And for me, that's certainly a major, major plus in the mentality that we should definitely have as average golfers because let's be honest, this game is tough enough. I can't not have a general comment about sort of stealth in general because um, it was introduced last year. The red faced driver was where all the noise was at and understandably so, it was a real story. But 
Perhaps even almost under the radar is their fairway woods and hybrids were, I think, superb last year. And perhaps, like I said, just a bit of an unsung hero, if you like, overshadowed by that driver launch. But these are so good um, in terms of all the performance criteria that you'd be looking for. And I've ended up with, well, basically a number of these in the bag at that long end because they sound good, they feel good, I think they look good. And uh, forgiveness elements is really good. They just have ticked every box. So whichever you prefer out of these two in terms of, uh, I think it's head style that's the big divider, then I still think either way that you choose to go, the stealth lineup is uh, it's spot on, to be honest with you. Interesting to see what's coming in, uh, well, perhaps only a few weeks time. For myself, even in this kind of like through the video and in a few shots, I find myself leaning more towards the nine wood is what I'd prefer to hit. Than the, um, than the hybrid. The one thing both of them do is they just present a lot of loft at a dress, which for me, I always say the same thing, just uh, breeds confidence. And then by having that bulk and mass at the back end, just tells you that you don't have to work as hard as you might do with an iron equivalent. But I always sort of feel, I mean, that's gone really well, but I always feel I'm guarding against the sort of, with the, uh, with the hybrids, that kind of hook to the, left which is never a great shot so much more confidence for me in the nine wood um all told and in terms of head profile i think equally versatile you could argue a little bit more versatility in a hybrid than there is in the fairway wood but again that's very much debatable and up to the individual just one final thing before i look at data to see what divides these two i said they're equally as impressive and the one thing they do incredibly well is launch the ball high and I, I always say in the videos, you know, it's the kind of thing that um, golfers, a lot of golfers struggle with, particularly with fairway woods. And uh, if we can pick a couple of these up on Shot Tracer, this is what uh, hopefully nine wood launch looks like. Well, that's, I mean, I don't really seem to be able to take a bad shot with this thing, but it's literally out into orbit, as I like to say. I'm just gonna go off screen and switch into the hybrid um, and try a similar thing because um, it's a kind of club, like I said, both of them, where not a great deal of effort required in terms of just keeping a nice, easy swing and in terms of tempo, let the club head do the rest. And like I said, the ball just has a tendency to uh, absolutely fly. Again, you know, slightly more left with the hybrid, which is always what I'm sort of guarded against. But the, what I was discussing in this particular clip was that launch angle and that it don't look very different, to be honest with you. Um, you would imagine, like I said, the weaker loft of the hybrid, this ain't gonna be traveling as far as the nine would, but launch conditions look very, very similar. But the point I'm trying to make is I could not do, I could not launch the ball in the same way with a long iron equivalent. And I think that's the important message. Right, okay, let's try and keep this one short and sweet. Um, I mean, the first thing to say is, my God, the performance out of both of these clubs, in my opinion, was really, really good. But one in particular shocks me. Uh, but anyway, let's start off with the numbers of the seven wood. Launching 18.9, uh, three, four spin. Uh, what else have we got there? Peak height of 34, which again, what I said to you, it's a really high ball flight, high launch angle, 191 carry on a seven wood. So. For me to replace a long iron equivalent that my 190 carry distance is, I'd choose this over long iron all day long. But then look at this for this five hybrid, which is the bit that absolutely baffles me. Uh, first of all, a 123 ball speed, which is ridiculous. It's more ball speed than the seven wood, and it's got a shorter shaft. This again goes back to that element of control and how much we're finding the center spot could be. We've got a spin number of 4474. Um, did we go launch angle 20.2, so slightly higher launch angle. Um, then we've got a peak height of 38 yards. So again, higher in terms of ball flight into the air, a descent angle of 48.1 and a carrier 184, would you believe, with a five hybrid. I mean, them numbers are just off the charts in terms of performance parameters, launch, spin, descent angle, peak height, carry distance. I'd argue you won't really get a better set of numbers to cover 185 yards. It is so, so good. So again, it's that boils down to now, what it is you're looking to cover in the bag, how you're looking to get there, what elements you're struggling with in terms of getting the ball there, 
and what gives you the confidence between the different head types. It's as simple as that. All I would say, we've done a couple of videos like this of late and it's highlighting clubs that make the game that little bit easier. And I don't care what anybody says, either of those two clubs definitely make that game easier than it uh, could possibly be by using long iron equivalents. That's my thoughts at least anyway, but obviously it's down to you people and I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on what you've seen in today's videos in terms of performance, in terms of my mindset and how yours is possibly different. Right, as ever, thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon.